Good morning. So uh, I want to thank um, all my subscribers and the, the the especially the cats that are watching the CFL stuff. And thank you for um, rules, reminders, and suggestions um, on strategies. Because, you know, you got to understand, um, I started paying attention to football at seven. So it's been 47 years. But, you know, uh, it's American football. So after 47 years of watching it, playing it, coaching it, playing tabletop games. It's habitual. We get into this, we get into this neuro pathway of, you know, and it's second nature strategy for me after 47 years of being exposed to American pro football and the strategies. Uh, it's just certain decisions and certain things are, are, are wrote right for us. Um, and I mean that even old coaches, um, Teach an old coach in, in you know in America football old, uh, old coach new tricks, uh, you know when they introduce the the two point conversion you know and or or some subtle change in American pro football rules, and a coach is stuck in his ways you know like uh, what we learn with analytical data right I mean uh, I I don't believe and uh, all analytical data is relevant I think it has to be in context of the game the situation, but all that analytic data is huge. And it, um, I learned so much from the 1988 uh, Hidden Game of Football, which I bought the new re-release and I've read it again. And it inspired how I make my tabletop football games, um, which is my, my tabletop football game like BCF can be so abstract and so simple, yet feel really good and authentic as you drop the, it's just, you know, because I'm using the the the, the hundred years worth of data collected and, and analyzed. But anyway, I'm getting off track. My point is, so, you know, something like CFL, uh, arena football, you know, or even NFL, you know, the rules change so much in the NFL. You know, you'll forget, oh, yeah, right. They kicked the ball off from the 40 during this one season or whatever it is. And so, uh, you know, 1995, they introduced the two point conversion. And and th those things are just something we we don't know or readily available or you just forget. You just completely forget. Right. And for me, like Apple, I would use. Like kickoffs, Apple says 30 yard line on the charts. I'd play rules as written. I didn't care. Uh, I use that because the data on the cards would suggest that that uh, the day that the kickoff uh, distance was going to be tied to their chart. So when somebody says, "Dude, they kicked off in the 35," yes, but the if the charts are, ba are are set and it says 30 on it, the cards are gonna are gonna have links, right? If that makes sense. So I have to trust the charts. I mean the length the average length of the kickoff is based from the 30 not from the 35 but this you can't argue with people who want accuracy uh the game says 30 and therefore i'm concerned the cards if i put them up to 35 uh the the data is going to be skewed right if i'm if i'm using the original app op engine right no big deal you, you you know you do this stuff so definitely this is and i'll be honest one of the reasons i do not play hockey on my channel is I, I can't pronounce the names, you know, it is horrific. And I know guys don't want to sit for 60 minutes and watch a guy butcher uh, the names. It's just, especially when you know them and uh, especially when you're a fan, I'm a diehard fan. When, and it, it, you know, some guy could say, huh, Eric Dickerson. Yeah. He looks like he's a pretty good back, you know, and you're flabber you're flabbergasted. Like, dude, don't you know who Eric Dickerson is? Uh, it's the same effect. I'm sure when I butcher a Hall of Fame ho hockey player's name, it's got to be not infuriating, but just like, dude, it's just it takes you out of the moment. Right. So as a as a as an audience watching some cat play a baseball game and uh, doesn't know the relevance of a third baseman. Right. And that's me. I don't I don't know all the Hall of Famers in baseball. and I certainly don't. Right. So I, I don't do baseball and hockey and things on my channel that I don't know that well. I would easily do the NBA because I know basketball so well. I know boxing for, uh, well, and I know, of course, American football really well. So I would have no problem doing those things on my channel um, because I know uh, the NBA uh, history and legends. And, uh, you know, so it just takes the, the 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 audience or the viewer kind of snaps them. You know, it's like breaking the fourth wall, right? It snaps a, a person into going oh i was digging this until until he you know until the dude didn't know who the place kicker was right and that's not our fault right it's not it's not the, the fault of the person who's never played an american football game before it's not the fault of a, 
but I, I actually appreciate the feedback, right? I like to know. And um, sometimes I do research before these things, but rarely I don't. I mean, I'm not going to have time to research every player in the 1978 set. So if, if, if a subscriber goes out of his way to say, hey, dude, that running back um, that you were, uh, you know, you were excited about in that game, he was a stud, right? It's, it's nice to know, right? It's nice to know. I'm kind of purposely not doing a lot of heavy research because I want to discover the players as if, you know, uh, I kind of want to discover. What I don't want to do is butcher names. I mean, I really don't. Uh, so I'm really appreciative of a handful of subscribers that are helping me with pronunciation. Um, it, that stuff's not going to uh, hurt my feelings. My ego is not tied up in this. So understand uh, I'm completely um, uh, uh, okay, right, with that kind of thing. The rule stuff, it's reminders. Like, dude, I keep forgetting after a field goal, a team has the option on the kickoff. It's like, man, I have got to get my head around that. Uh, the safety. I knew that I knew the CFL somewhere deep down had safeties, but for some reason the other day it's like, dude, whoa! I had to stop. I had to act. I was in a situation where there might be one, and I went, "Oh my God! What if?" I, I don't even know how the rules work. So even if I went ahead and applied the safety, I wouldn't have known. Do they kick off in the twenty? Do they get the ball to forty? I mean, it was amazing. So I looked it up immediately after the game. There's like three choices uh, teams get in a safety, and this is the thing about Canadian football: the level of choices in just how you want the ball after a safety. You want to force them to kick it off in the 20. You want to take it at your own 40. It's, 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 it's freaking amazing. And um, again, I've said it before, American football is very simple by comparison. Right. Uh, so anyway, I want to thank uh, all the guys that are watching the CFL stuff. Be patient with me as far as the players. And uh, I, I've actually got a friend that emailed me to help me with some pronunciation on the ones I've already butchered. Before my next game, I'm going to go through the teams, the starters. And uh, if there's any players among those starters that I think I'm going to butcher their name, I'm going to, I'm going to find out from him before I record the game and see if I can't get that name right. Uh, because, again, I don't want to, uh, uh, you know, be disrespectful to any any human being. Uh, you know, people have a right to get, have their name pronounced right, right? Um, so anyway... Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm loving the CFL. Uh, I watch it, but again, like anything, you, if you after you've watched it for say, you know, seventy games or you know two years of football, you're going to start to get the rules down, the strategies down uh, uh, secondhand. But uh, again, w w w the, my football is habitual, right? It's habitually based on the American game, so you just get into the mindset. One of the things, and I got to tell you this: this is going to sound crazy as hell. Dude, there is something about three downs that is uh, exciting as hell. I mean, I'm playing, I've only played two, I've played three. If I count cold snap, which doesn't do downs. So cold snap, you just move the ball around the field. I mean, cold snap express, you just move the ball up and down the field. There's not a lot of question about rules. Um, and so that was my first Canadian game, cold snap express. Then I bought cold snap, played two games with that. Um, and it was great, but something about um that two downs that you kind of gotta you gotta you gotta decide if you're going for a third there is something about three downs that is uh you just can't fiddle around right you either you're either going for it or you're punting the ball right but i mean you you really only have two downs to, to be decisive and you have to decide quickly as one one uh subscriber reminded me they get 20 seconds between plays you're not standing around the huddle you're not you're not you know, you're not having a, I mean, it's just amazing, right? I mean, it's uh, there, it is up to the line and snap the ball and, and there's just not a lot of messing around. And it's one of the big drawbacks. When you look at rugby, when you watch soccer or rugby, the ball's always moving. You know, the ball never stops. Even when guys are hurt, the ball's still moving around. I mean, rugby's the same way. They they don't stop play. The Canadian game is still closer to the, the, the roots of uh, rugby because they're they're moving along faster, right? They get to the line, they snap the ball, they go. They don't huddle for long. They, they make some substitutions. 20 seconds is about enough time to spot the ball and get substitutions on and off the field. And your defense is don't have, doesn't have time for a lot of stuff. And it's just, there is a tempo to the Canadian game that is fantastic. Now, I love the chess match and the X's and O's of this football. Um. But boy, as a, a when you've 
watched and you've grown up watching the American game, uh, you certainly get into this kind of uh, uh, the tempo of the American game is very slow and you don't realize it until you've watched the Canadian game for any period of time. It's, it is, it's something that you just don't know. You don't know until you have this perspective, right? You can't know what the, what it looks like unless you see it done another way. Um, and to see the American team still getting delay game penalties, dude, they, they get 40 seconds. I think it's 35. Now they've tried to speed up the game, 35 seconds between play and these cats can't get the ball off. The time. It's like, what the hell are you doing? My point is, the thing I'm finding the most fun in these two APA games that I've shared is the three downs. It, it is just so fun. I cannot explain uh, that decision you make on what you choose to do on first down. It's it's let's put it this way. And again, in pro football, if you have poor first down production, it's going to kill you because it's going to lead to it's going to be lead to third and long, and third and long is bad in pro American football. Well, in the Canadian game, dude, you got like that first down call. It's huge because it's literally going to dictate your second down call, right? And I just, it's something very fun about that for me. There's so much on the first down in pro foot in American football, but you still have second down to try to get some of that yardage back or a chance to, you know, throw twice. Um, and if people don't understand that, um, let me put it in perspective for you. Uh, the biggest mistake last year in the Super Bowl, Kyle Shanahan uh, chose to take the ball in overtime. Huge mistake. And when people say, why? Why is that a big mistake, right? Because if you score a field goal or if you score a touchdown, right, it's no longer game over. The Chiefs get the ball back with a chance to, to score a touchdown or match. But the Chiefs know they have four downs to do it, right? It would have taken the punt out of the game for the Chiefs. Give Mahomes four downs to move 10 yards with with seven minutes on the clock, dude, you're not going to stop Mahomes. You are not going to stop the Chiefs with four downs. You're just not going to do it. So the huge mistake Kyle Shanahan made in that decision was, hey, we get the ball, we get momentum, we go down, we kick a field goal, and that wouldn't, we go down, score a touchdown, we got them. The Chiefs know they have four downs. Um, and that's that'll give you an idea what three downs feels like in the Canadian game, right? It's pretty cool. Uh, that's been the most eye-opening for me, tabletop, right? Um, obviously, rules and strategies, that stuff plays out. The size of the field in real life or watching it. Uh, but on a tabletop, you don't get the dimensions of the field, right? It, only, the, only the fact that you have to go 110 yards from end to end uh, that you're kicking but that's all relative, right? Because you're 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 you can be game logging it or just moving a, a token on a board. Obviously, in the physics of football, it's a big deal. But that part you don't actually know the difference of when you're playing the game on a tabletop. Well, you are when you have strategic decisions to make, right? Um, but for instance, there is no physics model to say, hey, uh, that 20 yard end zone means I can actually throw a long pass from the 20, right? So in Stratomatic, it says you can't throw a long pass at the 20 or closer. If you were playing the Canadian version of Stratomatic, you would want to change those rules. Yeah, I can throw a long pass from the 20 because I got 20 yard end zone to get my feet in. And that's that's where the tabletop, that would matter in a tabletop game, right? Oh, dude, those 20 yard end zone, let me throw a long from the 20, right? Um, and I love that. Now we're seeing the field matter, right? There's a lot of green out there for you to throw that rock to, right? Uh, same thing about the one yard. See, the thing you don't see in tabletop is that one yard cushion between the, the center and the defensive line. It is huge. It is huge. And you should be able to uh, sneak or quick snap and get a yard, right? So you can imagine uh, there's a lot of short conversions that are uh, off the ball uh, quickly, right? Uh, however, you're not guaranteed it, right? That's what makes it competition. That's what makes it sport. There's no guarantee you're going to get that yard, right? But the three downs is what I'm experiencing. This is kind of like the instant effect is the three downs, right? I, I you know, it took me the first couple of games I played, I had to remind myself, dude, I only had three downs. I mean, literally, I, I would think I have, you know, I would forget and play a four down and I would, oh yeah, right, right, right. I only got three downs. Well, now I'm not having trouble remembering I got three downs. That's, you know, after a game or two, you're not going to forget that. What I am doing is saying, wait a minute, you know, um, maybe 
uh, you know, if you pass on first down and you don't get something, you are definitely passing on second down, right? Unless you're in a situation to punt the ball because you don't want to risk turning it over in your end or something. So it just it sounds weird, but so in, in American football, first down is known as the vanilla down. That's the down you're going to get a base defense. That's the down where you actually you have the best chance to execute what you do best. So if I if somebody said to me, hey, what's what's a big difference in American football? Well, down one is generally going to face a base defense. You're going to face a vanilla defense, right? So if you run well, do it. If you pass well, you know, do it. If you fail, you're in second and long, which is generally going to lead to a third and long, which is just really bad. Uh, if you watch pro football this last weekend, teams with pass rushers are going to destroy you on third and long. They're, uh, great pass rushers dominate pro American football. Um, they are the they are the most important ingredient on defense in American football, especially this modern sport where we're throwing the ball so much. So third and seven, third and eight, third and nine, third and whatever, it's it's going to get you. It's just it's very very difficult to execute against teams that can rush the passer. So again, the Canadian game, I, I watch it. They're a yard off the ball. And they produce pressure. It's amazing. I mean, I've just been loving watching the Canadian uh, game, the highlights. So the point is, uh, what has been the most wow for me uh, playing tabletop has been the process that I'm thinking about. What what should I do with these guys on first down? What should I do with these guys on second down? And uh, it's um, I'm not using automated play calling. I'm not using some solitaire play call that would that would direct that you know what's called and i'm i'm you know I'm, i enjoy calling offense uh that's what my call and roll charts are meant for me to just call plays and roll dice i don't have to worry about defense it's built into the cards built into the charts so i'm really digging how the the canadian version of app off football feels in my simple solo call and roll as opposed to as opposed to the traditional american game in the call and roll system right um, so maybe it's maybe it's more of an effect of how my single my sol my solitaire charts work with APA. Maybe that's the joy I'm feeling. Maybe it's maybe it's just that particular system, and I'm making too much of it. But uh, it's made me think. Okay, you know, um, clearly they had to throw more. Even even when they ran uh, well, they they still had to throw more because you're going to be looking at which means. Oh, by the way, more punts. But again, um, it's closer to rugby. Uh, than it is um, American football, right? So if you were to say, what is Canadian football? Uh, between, you know, it's it's still closer to rugby than American football is closer to rugby. Um, and then, of course, it's a football game. So what's interesting is rugby, you punt, you, you get the ball out of your territory. You you grub or kick it. You are, are you destroy kicking. You're not always going to, out of the scrum, going to run with it or pitch with it. You're going to boot that sucker deep and, and change the nature of the field position. So you think, oh, God, punting a lot, that's just boring. No, that's part of it. And uh, what's cool is that there is such an emphasis on executing on first down and second down. And uh, it, it puts this kind of pressure on you, I think, as a play caller and as an offense, that you really only have one down to kind of get right and then the second down to complete the process. Um, in pro football, okay, we got one down, we got two downs. Okay, we still got a third down here, guys. It seems one down, it just, it seems like it's, how can you not convert? I'm sure there are Canadian football fans that are like, dude, if we, how can you not convert if you get three downs? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, and uh, I'm literally playing the CFL game going, holy shit, how am I going to convert? I only got two downs. <laughs> you know, it's, it's so much fun. Anyway, I want to thank the subscribers that are uh, sharing this Canadian experience with me, this CFL experience with me. And uh, thanks for your uh, pointers and thanks for your help with pronunciation. Uh, and uh, hopefully um, I'm bringing a little exposure to uh, to the CFL. I'm bringing a little exposure to Chris and his amazing work. Listen, I, w I looked at those teams again this morning, sorting them. And so get this uh, again, a gift from Chris, uh, unbelievably kind, right? Um, but get this, uh, that part of the reason, you know, he gifted it was they didn't print right. Right. So, uh, you know, you got the, you got the football player on the back of the card was blank. It, 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 it did not print it properly on the actual fake card. So, so he printed a second set of, of backs and then he had to put them in those envelopes 
so think about this, Chris, the VSU, Chris is just amazing. So not, not only did he gift it to me, but technically it was three times as much. You know, he, he gifted me the sets, but then he made backs. So there were two cards. So every player basically has two cards. Uh, they're a card plus a, a back. And then of course, to make it work, because you can't glue them, you don't get a glue or anything. He, slit, he's, he put them in clear envelopes. Every single player in the league, even if they didn't have a back problem. So some of the players, by the way, had their backs on. So there's like three teams that were affected, the other six teams. So get this, I would say uh, maybe three and a half teams had players that were affected by this. The other the other five and a half teams, six and a half teams were perfect. He put every player in plastic, whether they needed it or not. So, I mean, that's 30% more cards that he that he printed. And then he then he had to put them all in envelopes. Uh, so everything was even and everything looked good and and. Uh, and, and then and, and gave that to me. I mean, he didn't have to give me anything. So for the dude to spend three times the cost for him to gift that to me. And uh, I mean, he could have just written me, said, dude, I've got a I've got a botched batch of the CFL 78. Would you like to have it? It's botched. I, you know, I'm sorry. It's botched if you want it. And I would have said, absolutely. Beggar, you know, I'd love to. But, you know, he uh, that's amazing. And if he's willing to do that to gift something that he didn't even have to give me, even tell me he was giving me. Um, you know, that's, that's serious commitment to, to, to product. It's a good, it, it's, a, it's, it's a, it's amazing. Uh, the, the, what Chris and Chris is a one man show. I mean, he has a printer. Um, but I mean, Chris is kind of a one man show there, you know, and, uh, he, uh, it's amazing. Um, that's customer service. And I wasn't even, I wasn't in any buy him, you know, so I got to point that out. So, Exposure to the CFL and my favorite football game, and I've made no bones about this the last four years, five years, is Apple football. Um, it is by far my favorite solitaire experience. And so much so that I created my own charts to speed it up and to, and to get exactly the experience at the table I want with these amazing sets and cards. Um, and so to see, to have the chance to play the CFL with my favorite football game, is phenomenal and including the world football league so anyway last but not least i talked to chris the other day um and uh we talked about you know what other football leagues would be cool and because um and so i gave him some of my advice on which i think other leagues would be sweet to see but i gotta tell you and i told this to chris dude you've got to make more canadian leagues you've got to make more teams you got to make more sets something even if you just pick teams from eras or whatever there's just got to be more Canadian football sets, more Canadian teams, et cetera. Um, and so I, I, uh, I've been told by, uh, I think, two or three different subscribers that the 2011 CFL season is amazing. So I recommended that. Um, and why? Because it's the single closest season in CFL history, right? The, the best team in the league separated from the worst team in the league was three games, right? That's amazing. Um, a lot of 11 and seven teams, 10 and eight teams. And then I think the worst team was 11 and eight or 11 and 10 or something, or I can't remember No, 11 and uh, excuse me, eight and 11 or something, eight and uh, 10. Um, so I've, I've had somebody recommend 2011. So I recommended that to Chris as well. And uh, of course I own 60 and, and uh, 95 for cold snap and 78 for cold or 75 for cold. So I can't remember. I own three sets for cold snap. Uh, I got 60 because I love old, old school football, uh, the American era from 1950 to 1960, you know, from 50 to 70. I love for American history, right? Not my favorite. It's just uh, I love going back to when football was a, a different type of sport. So, of course, I ordered the 60 set for C, uh, for Cold Snap. That was the first um a uh, set of teams I ever had for cold snap. And then again, I got 95 and I think 75 or 78. I can't remember. I've got two sets. And of course I got 95 because that was the last year of the American uh, that they had basically an American division or American conference in the CFL and uh, uh, Birmingham, I believe won the great cup. And then the Canadians took their ball and went home said, Oh, if you're if Americans are going to start beating us in our own game, we quit, you know? So the, the Canadians quit. And they didn't want nothing more to do with the Americans holding their precious gray cup. And I get it, you know, you, um, you know, sore losers. So they, they don't play with Americans anymore. Well, but I'm going to own it because we had the gray cup and technically because they was the, the Canadians never took the gray cup technically back. 
uh, in a follow-up year, technically we still have the Grey Cup. I mean, if you think about it, we've owned the Grey Cup since 1995, right? So, uh, you know, if this was the Stanley Cup and we were just holding on to it and you can't get it back, you know, but uh, no, um, I'm loving it. And uh, I do appreciate the support. Uh, again, I'll, I try not to, uh, um, you know, and I and I trust the app all set. Um, the app all rule set. So when I see that injury score and I see that rating and I can scrutinize the data on the cards, that's how I'm deciding who starts at quarterback or running back, et cetera. So I may be slightly wrong if I pick uh, a quarterback that didn't start. Because I said before, I'm, I'm really not doing a lot of research on the 76 teams. I'm going by what I know, uh, Huff Nagel and and there are other quarterbacks. Obviously, I recognize their name immediately. Oh, uh, Dieter Brock, for instance, uh, fantastic. Played for the Rams. I really like Dieter Brock when he when he played for the Rams here. So, a lot of the a lot of the names I do recognize, um, but I might not like. For instance, Warren Moon. Had I had I not uh, scrutinized the cards, I might have just put Warren Moon as starter because I know that Warren Moon at some point became a superstar. Uh, it really earned him. How he played in the CFL earned him. Uh, shot back in the NFL. Uh, same with Doug Flutie, how he played in the CFL got him a chance to play back in uh, in the American game. And, and uh, so, uh, but I trusted the data on the cards and uh, I'm not going to know, like name recognition of offensive linemen and many of the players, uh, I, I just won't, I won't know. And, um, you know, it's just the way it's going to be. Uh, I'm hoping to discover the stars through play. And when I got a guy that's rated, oh, I got a receiver rated an A7, he's going to start. And obviously through play, you know, when he catches three or four touchdowns in two weeks or something, you're like, oh, yeah, this guy's a stud, right? I love kind of I love kind of uncovering the mystery of these cats a little bit too. But uh, anyway, thank you. This has been a long video. I didn't mean for it to be long. It was a thank you video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for helping. Thank you for sharing. And uh, hopefully I'm not butchering too badly your sport and uh, taking you out of the suspension of disbelief. All right, bye.